Allah is called what? Nur samawati wal Is nur something experienced by people? Yeah. So Allah doesn't have to say Allah is. Uh, before I explain the analogy to you in depth, which I won't today, but just a touch of it, just a touch of it. Crumbs. Well, your crumbs, yeah. So you have. Um, what's the way by which we can see? Light. The Arabs actually called one of the words for the eye in Arabic is nur. Also, another word for vision is nur. Uh, uh, and the, the guy who is blind, uh, the a'ma is also called faqidu nur al basar. He doesn't have light in the eye. The twinkle of the eye, they would consider that the ability of the eye to see. The light of the eye. Obviously, also our lights, not getting too scientific, but our lights, our eyes, when do they function? When there is what? Light. If there's no light, they don't function. There's no purpose to them if there's no light. Our way to observe reality around us is through our vision. We don't, know, we don't know what a tree looks like. We don't know what our parents look like. We don't know anything that anything looks like. We don't know beauty. We don't know, you know, uh, uh, incentive. We don't know any of those things until we have something to see, right? And even those who can't see use their imagination to see. They wonder what it must look like. In their mind, they have a picture, right? So Allah calls himself Nur. But not just any Nur. He called himself Nurus Samawati Wal Ard. Which is particular. Like Allah doesn't just call himself Rabb, he calls himself Rabbul Alameen, Rabbul Samawati Wal Ard. He associated that light to the skies and the earth. The skies and the earth is the Quran's reference to the physical universe. What you can see as far as your imagination goes in the universe. Now, Allah is comparing Himself to your ability to, the, the thing you need to be able to see the universe for what it is. What Allah is saying here in brief is, without Allah, you don't really see anything. You don't really see anything. You think you see it. But looking at the skies and the earth, without Allah, is, you are as lost as to what it really is as someone who's blind and can only imagine what, what it must really be. Someone who has faith in Allah has a light in their, has the real light through which they can see, and then they see reality. Now, I see a tree, and someone who studies agriculture and has a PhD in trees in Texas, and people do that sort of thing, sees a tree. And I can't tell you much about that tree, and he can write a book on that tree. But if he doesn't have a lie in his heart, guess what? He doesn't see it for what it is. And I do. I have an advantage over him because I have nurus samawati without. Then, of course, when you're talking about Allah, you're talking about something that can't be encapsulated. But this is a simile, this is a parable. You want to think about Allah the way you want to think about the light with which you use to understand the world around you. Why is it a parable? Is Allah Himself make it clear that it's a parable? Allahu nuru samawati wal ard mathalu nurihi. The example of His light. Now the idhafa changed. Instead of being the light of the skies and the earth, now it's becoming His light. Meaning the light that he just referred to in this ayah, the parable he just gave. What, what, what can it be given a parallel to? Kamishkatin fiha misbah, to an indent, a niche in a wall. They do this in Texas construction, by the way. I haven't seen it much in the East Coast, because we, we don't have anything in the East Coast. But whatever. We, we, we have, we're short on space. We don't have a lot of new construction. Everything's congested already, right? So a lot of the country where you have bigger and older cities, you don't get a lot of new construction and design and things like that. You just work with what you have. In Texas, they build these niches, large rooms, so there's, the, the light wants to spread. So they'll build this kind of arch thing, and it's indented. You're supposed to put a lamp in there or a light in there or some art in there or something like that. Now, the, this is actually an ancient construction piece to put a dent inside the wall, to a niche, an arch inside the wall. Why? Because they put a lamp in there and because of the shape of the arch, the light spreads to the entire room. It reflects off of it and lights up the entire room. Okay? So the purpose of that niche is to spread the light. That's what it does. That's called a mishkat. Mishkat. So the example of Allah's light is, you can think of it as an arch, fiha misbah, in which there's a lamp. Al misbah, fi zujaja, the lamp is in a glass. And then he goes on to further describe the glass. But the interesting thing is you're thinking about a house and a room that's dark originally. It's dark. And the only thing that, you know, the, the place you would expect the light to be is where inside this arch. But that arch is empty unless you put what there? 
a lamp, and that lamp has to be lit. And if that lamp is going to survive, it has to have the right kind of oil, pure oil. And the glass should be clean, because if the glass is dirty, light won't light up the room. It'll still be a damp room, right? That arch is actually the rib cage. In the, in the analogy, it's describing a rib cage. It looks like an arch. And in it, Allah placed a hole, and in that hole, He put a lamp. What's that lamp? Our heart. It's our heart. And then, describing that heart, he said, it's got the most refined material inside. Pure. Not inclining to the east nor the west. لا شرقية ولا غربية In other words, you won't find this kind of oil in the east coast, you won't find it on the west coast. It's not even from this earth. It is otherworldly. You know where it's from? From Allah. That's the ruh. It's pure. It's pure. And that light, if you know something about pure like gasoline or oil, like really refined oil, if the fire's over here and the gas is over there, what does it look to do? It actually jumps to it. It looks to the physical eye like it's jumping to it. That's why Allah says, يَكَادُ زَيْتُهَا يُضِيءُ it oil, Its oil wants to light up. And it's beautiful that he said يُضِيءُ and he didn't say يُنِيرُ يُنِيرُ means he wants to get on fire. It wants to set on fire. <clears throat> but he said he wants to light up. It wants to light up. And then it's interesting that he said يُضِيءُ also and not يُنَوِّرُ or يُنَوَّرُ now, you know what it means, uh, the word from nur. But yudhi'u comes from the word daw. Daw is also light, nur is also light. But Allah says, huwa alladhi ja'ala shamsa dhiya'an wal qamara nuran. He made the shams dhiya' and he made the qamar nur. Nur is light that doesn't have any burning in it. There's no heat in it. Daw is light that has burning in it. The light of Allah is nur. The light you feel inside, some of it, it's not entirely new, it's got an element of what? Dhaw in it. Why? Because when we experience that light, there is going to be some pain. There's going to be some burning. There's going to be some sacrifices. There's, going to, there's, there's an element of difficulty inside the word you lead. وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْسَسُنَا Then Allah says, نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٌ نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٌ Light upon light. Famous phrase, right? Light upon light. It's used in MSA flyers all the time. Light upon light. What in the world does that mean? This lamp inside, this heart inside, Allah put light in it before we even got here. And then there's the light of revelation Allah sends. That's the light, that's also called light. Believe in Allah the Messenger and the light that we sent down. Okay, now we're learning Allah is the way by which you see reality. And we're also learning revelation is the way by which you see reality. But Allah says, this light, the light outside, will not be of any benefit if your eyes are closed or if you're blind. And what's the lamp you need inside? The heart. So he says, when this clean heart means this light that was put inside meets that light of revelation, then the two lights collide and the, the entire in entity of the human being inside of him is lit up. And he calls it nurun, ala light upon light. There's light on top of the light you already have inside. And this person gets lit up. The darkness inside them goes away. The sadness inside them goes away. The fears inside them go away. The jealousy inside them goes away. It's light upon light. Nurun ala nur. And then you're just, you're just sitting there listening to that like, Whoa. Yahdillahu li nurihi man yasha. Allah guides to his light. No, he says, man yasha. Man yasha is also beautiful. Man yasha means whoever wants. Also means whoever he wants. Such a beautiful ayah. Allah says, whoever wants can have this light, and whoever he wants can have this light. So there are two wills here in the same ayah. What two wills? My will and your, my will and Allah's will, both wills. And Allah made them simultaneous. In other words, I will give this light, I'm willing to give it to you, Allah is saying, but you have to be willing to accept it. If you're not willing, then I'm not willing. Our wills are simultaneous. It's equally your decision as it is mine. That's in Maniyasha. And then he says, وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ لَمْ ثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ And Allah just gives examples for people. Oh, such a powerful example. Allahu nur samawati